about three minutes till and we're going to go ahead this evening and uh, begin our service because we've got several prayer requests that have been called in to me and uh, others will be coming in. Do you first of all have a request, urgent request tonight anywhere in the house behind me? Okay. All right. I know Richard was going down to Augusta. He must not have gotten back yet. Pray for him. Sister Disher called me, and uh, they've gone to Florence. They're moving the trip to Florence for an operation. And uh, he really, really desperately 
needs our prayers. He's got a serious operation he's facing upon his spine. So uh, Mary Bricky called me. Her sister Dorothy from over in West Columbia is in the hospital with pneumonia. And uh, she needs our prayers. My son-in-law, Donnie Ray Finley, is in a pretty rough condition. They're going to have to operate and redo his whole knee. He needs our prayers. My nephew, Jason, still needs our prayers. My first cousin, Saki, needs our prayers. And I've had numerous calls, and God knows all about them, who they are, and what their needs are. Does anybody else have anything? All right, unspoken requests in the house of God. Amen. We all have those. But you know what? God's not dead, is he? God's not dead. People think the church going under. Church not going under. Church going up. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead, honey. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. That, mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. Yeah. You had a good experience at the prayer call too, didn't you, Wayne? Yeah, I'm just wondering if that's that oil you dug off your floor. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know, do you, Wayne? Praise the Lord. God is God and God moves, doesn't he? He's able. What would you say, huh? That's right. It's not the oil itself. It's a symbolic of the Spirit of God and where you put your faith at. That is absolutely right. But God is good. God is good. we got a lot of sick folk, but uh, hopefully a lot of them will be getting over some of their conditions, be able to be back in the house of God. But that's okay. There's somebody out there needs the word tonight, and it will go out and not come back void. Praise God. Would you stand all over the house? We're going to go to God. Let's believe that the God we serve is able, and these requests will be met. Almighty God, as we gather here this evening in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for Calvary. I thank you that you are a God of mercy and a God of love. And, and God, we come to you this evening. Lord, the request. Remember trip tonight, Father, facing that operation. And God, I know you're able, Lord, to touch his body. You're able, God, to heal him. And we lift him before you tonight, God. I know, Lord, that you're able to touch Donnie Ray's leg and his knee and Jason and the souls of these that are lost above all else, God. We pray for them. We know, God, that there are many not able to be here, but there are those, Lord, who could have been, and they're just not. But, Father, it's their loss, and we just thank you and praise you that we're coming to you tonight, believing that every need is to be met. We thank you, Lord, for the praise reports that are taking place. We glorify you. We honor you in this house tonight in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. I'm going to go ahead and say something. You might be seated there before we really uh, go into a song. I told Judy I was going to do it a little different, but I'm going to go ahead and say something. I got a call this morning from uh, Gary, West Virginia, Billy and Sue Ball, and they watch us. They've been watching us from the day we started live streaming. Good, godly people. Good, godly people. And they made a prayer request for Judy to do a song and uh, isn't it on the blood after a while? She's going to do that tonight for them. But I just appreciate those who let us know that they watch. And he was telling me how many people they send our live streaming out to. And how many different states that they're sending it to. And people are watching it. So I appreciate that. I really do. All of them that watch. And I thank God for it. All right, Judy? No, whenever you. Whenever you get ready. She'll sing it for him sometime tonight. Praise the Lord. God said he would turn it around. God said he would turn it around. Well, what the devil went for evil, God will make it good. Turn around, turn around, turn around. Well, the midnight, the joy is here. Joy is soon to come, turn around. 
There's power in that blood. You sure can. I'd love to your mic. I can seem loud. I can do loud. Yep, they need to hear. Oh, Lord. Go ahead. My blood pressure got up yesterday, 170 over 98. This morning it was down to 114 over 74. And I want to thank God for that. Amen. Tell me prayer doesn't work. People don't know what they're talking about. But they tell me that I done come too far. I know better than that. Praise God. And I forgot to tell you, if you had an offering, put it in the back pan back there. If you, if you got one, just go ahead and do that. Praise the Lord tonight. I don't know if I'd ever make it on one of these real fancy things where you have to do everything perfect. Do you know what I mean? I don't do anything perfect, that's for sure. But you know what? I can't pretend I'm something I'm not. I am what I am, and I just love the Lord, and, and I'm here to give out the Word of God, Sister Roby, and that's what God put me here for. We might not sing Judah like some of these big shot churches do, and they've got all these great musicians. That's okay. If God give them that, that's fine. But you know what? I'd rather have the anointing. Not that they're not anointed, but I'd rather have the anointed than anything else in the singing. God's good to us, church. Amen. Praise the Lord tonight. Are you ready for the word? Yes. What is this? About the third time I've tried to preach this. <laughs> I, I, was, I was intended to, but God always had, each time he had something else he desired to have done. So we're going to try it again tonight, and we're going to talk about, and don't, don't say anything about the way I pronounce these names, okay? I'm not Jewish. I don't know how, I don't have that accent. I don't know how to do it, so I'm going to do the best I can. But we're going to talk about Numbers 27 and Joshua 17. The daughters of Zelopahad. Zelopahad. Numbers 27, 1 through 7. Go ahead. Then came the daughters of Zelopahad, the son of Hepher, the son of Gilead, the son of Machar, the son of Manasseh, of the families of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. And these are the names of his daughters, Melah, Noah, Hoglah, Milcah, and Tirzah. And they stood before Moses and before Eleazar the priest and before the princes and all the congregation by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation saying... Our father died in the wilderness, and he was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against the Lord in the company of Korah, but died in his own sin and had no sons. Why should the name of our father be done away from among his family? Because he has no son. Give unto us, therefore, a possession among the brethren of our father. And Moses brought their calls before the Lord, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, The daughters of Zelopahad speak right. 
They shall surely give them a possession of an inheritance among their father's brethren. And thou shalt cause the inheritance of their father to pass unto them. Now all of that was while they were in the wilderness traveling. They'd come out of Egypt. Now they get into the promised land, and this is where these scriptures come in. But Zelopahad, the son of Hepher, the son of Gilead, the son of Machar, the son of Manasseh, had no sons but daughters. Tangy, what are you giving me? Okay. And these are, these are the same scriptures, honey, that you gave me. Okay, let, let me go to Joshua 17 and see what I can find here. All right, that's what it says, okay? It's just repeating it. Yeah. And verse 4, And they came near unto Eleazar the priest, and before Joshua the son of Nun, and before the princes, saying, The Lord commanded Moses to give us an inheritance among our brethren. Therefore, according to the commandment of the Lord, he gave them an inheritance among the brethren of their father. And the church says, Amen. You might be seated here. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 12, there is a scripture that says, The kingdom of God suffers violence. And he said, The violent take it by force. We're in a battle tonight, children of God. And if you don't fight for what belongs to you, the devil will take your inheritance away from you. And these five girls said, we want our inheritance. Now, what I'm going to speak tonight about is father, probably, a, it's going to seem a little bit unusual, but God did not put these names in the Word of God just to be putting them there. In, our, in the culture there, most Bible names had a reason and a meaning that they were there. But what I want to minister on tonight is mentioned in Numbers and Joshua, and actually, that's the only place that you will find this. And I'm going to have to give you a little bit of background about it. And I've looked up and I went all over the place trying to find messages to see a kind of guide what other people had said about Zelopahad. And almost everywhere you look, they gear their messages toward the inheritance. But they're using more of an earthly inheritance. And I want to do something just a little bit different on this thing tonight. And I want you to notice first and foremost, chapter 27, verse 1, will give you the ge genealogy of these girls and it tells who their father were. And that genealogy goes all the way back to the tribe of Manasseh, and Manasseh was a son of Joseph. You have to go back to Genesis 48 and other places to find it. But do you remember who Joseph was? Remember the coat of many colors. He was the one that sold into slavery by his brothers. While he was there, Potiphar, you know, uh, bought him off the slave block, basically. And he ended up second in command of all that whole place. And while he was there, he had two sons. One of them was Ephraim, and the other was Manasseh. So this is who the genealogy of Zelopahad and his daughters goes all the way back to Manasseh, the son of Joseph. Y'all with me? But in this particular passage that started in Numbers ch uh, chapter 27, the children of Israel, as I told you, came out of Egypt. They're in their wilderness journey. They're going to go before God one day and hopefully get some land. But while they're in that wilderness, there is a rebellion of Korah, Dathan, and Abram. You've got to go back in Numbers, I think, about chapter 16, to read about that. But even though he was kind of in that mess, their father did not get involved in that. It was a rebellion against the leadership of God. God chooses leadership. God put Moses in the position he was in. 
But they rose up, 250, I believe, of the princes of Israel and said, why should you be the leader over us? I'm paraphrasing. And they come against who God had chosen, and God destroyed them. But they say, our daddy didn't do that. Our father was not involved in that. And so these girls, after their daddy dies in the wilderness, they must have been thinking about their inheritance, five children, all of them girls. And they begin to thinking about it's going to be worth it all when we get there. And then they say, now I'm paraphrasing, wait a minute now, when we get there we will have no inheritance because we don't have any brothers. And they were saying that when we get there, what are we going to do? And undoubtedly, if it was me, I would have talked among my sisters and I'd said, let's see what we can do about this thing. And this is exactly what they did. Because it would be a terrible thing, even for you and I, to live all of our life, work hard down here, and die, and that's all there is to it. That would be awful. But 1 Corinthians 15 and 19 says, If in this life only we have hope in Christ, then we are of all men most miserable. I thank God tonight that there's something better than this place we're living in. It's a wonderful place. The Bible said that we were saved and we become joint heirs with Jesus Christ and he gives us an inheritance that's incorruptible, undefiled, and fadeth not away. One day we're going to go to that, Sister Diane. It's a beautiful place. We call it heaven. We call it the promised land. And that's what this is a picture of. The inheritance is actually a type and shadow of the promised land. So they're on their way in the wilderness, and one day they get there into the promised land, and under Joshua, he goes in and destroys all those pagan, not all of them, but a lot of the pagan areas, drives them off, destroys them, and they begin to take the land. And then there comes a day when they are really uh, dividing out the land. And they're dividing it by the lots to the different tribes. And Moses, they come there and they, they plead their case because in the wilderness they went to Moses and they you know, told Moses and Eliezer the high priest and they said our father was a good man and, and we, we didn't, you know, it's not right that we're left with nothing. He didn't do anything wrong. Like I'm just, I'm just repeating that. But they said, we want our inheritance and Moses took it to God. Eliezer took it to God, the high priest. And they said, yes, they're right. And God said, let them have the inheritance of their father. And when you look in Numbers 27 and 4, they did it with a motive that was a motive that was right. It wasn't just to get the land, but they wanted their father's name to be kept honorable because he did not do anything against God. He did not rise up against the man of God. So they wanted their daddy to stay honorable, his name. So now Moses is dead, like I said, and they, they go, and they go into the promised land, and they had guts enough to go back to Joshua, Moses is dead, and tell Joshua, wait a minute, back in the wilderness, now I'm just building a background for where I'm going to, but said back in the wilderness, we went to Moses, and under him and Eliezer, the high priest, we were granted the right of heirship. And so they give it to them. Y'all with me? And the reason they got it, because they had guts enough to claim it. You know what's wrong with a lot of God's people? We don't have the guts enough to stand up against the enemy and say, wait a minute, the word of God says I can have this or it says I can have that. 
and most of us lay down and let the devil walk all over us. And you know why we can have salvation? Because the word of God says we can have salvation. And so we do it by faith and we claim what belongs unto us. You don't get salvation because your social background. You don't get it because your intellectual ability. We don't get it because of anything except that the word of God says if we confess by our mouths that the Lord Jesus Christ, who he is, and believe in our heart to, that God raised him from the dead, the Bible said we shall be saved. That's why we get our inheritance. But I want to break down these names. I said all of that to get to this. And I want to break down these names and see what they mean concerning the inheritance, okay? And remember, this has to do because God set up the laws of inheritance because of these girls, they're in the Word of God. And I said that was a natural inheritance, but we're looking spiritual tonight. Now, who is it? The father's name was Zelopahad. What does his name mean? His name means firstborn. So spiritually, these are the children of the firstborn claiming their inheritance. Is anybody here tonight a child of God? The Bible said in Hebrews 12 and 23, if you are, then you are in the church of the firstborn written in heaven. Do y'all realize that tonight? Earthly families can only have one firstborn. But when you're a Christian, a child of God, we are all firstborn children of God. Y'all hear me tonight? And the Bible said that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is going to quicken our mortal bodies and one way we too are going to rise. Honey, you belong to something greater tonight than the Elgin C.H. Church. Thank God for the local church, but thank God for the children of the firstborn. And one day God's children will gather together around the throne of God to receive our inheritance from the Lord because we're part of the firstborn. And we can say it's ours because God's word said we can have it. But if your father is the God of this world, who is Satan, then you're not going to get the inheritance that I'm getting. No siree. you got to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. He has to be your father. God is your father. So God prophetically led the giving of the names of these five girls. And I believe he did it to give us an insight into what awaits us in heaven and remember, through them was an earthly inheritance, and their names all have something to do with what we're going to inherit. With me so far? Okay. The first one was Mela, M-A-H-L-A-H. -H. Sister Luke, what does it mean? Weak, sickly, and disease. Well, Sister Luke, that don't sound like heaven. It don't, does it? Why would he name his daughter's disease? Do you know why? Maybe that one girl had been born weak, you know, sickly or weak when she was a child or something. But this godly man, I believe he goes a little bit deeper with what he was saying and the rest of them is going to match up with it. I believe he's thinking about the inheritance. And I believe he's saying, children, some of you is going to be sick down here. 
You're going to be weak. You're going to have some diseases. But there is an eternal inheritance. And it's going to take care of all of that disease. And when you cross over, that disease is going to stay right here on this earth. Do you know tonight that in heaven there is no cancer, there is no diabetes, no heart trouble, no kidney trouble, no no arthritis, no disease that you can name is going to make it into heaven and nobody will ever be sick nor will they grow old. They're not going to have MS or dementia or COVID. Woo! But when we get inside the gates, disease has to stay out of that place. When I got so, uh, saved, the Lord redeemed my soul, my spirit, uh, man. But you know what? My body still has to fight the flesh. My body still gets diseases in it. We all get things that happens to us. Yes, sometimes we can get healed if our faith reaches out, but there's coming a day when I'm going to have a new body and I won't even have to worry about that anymore. There not be any pills, Sister Roby, any eyeglasses, any hearing aids. There'll be no pacemakers over there. There'll be no wheelchairs or canes. Our bodies are limited here, but over there we can get a new glorified body. Woo! Bless his name. We are going to a place, children, where disease cannot come. <laughs> If that doesn't make you shout, you're just dead. That's all I can say. Mela. And then the second daughter that I want to talk about was Noah. And her name means motion or to move. And I believe spiritually he was saying, by the way, girls, when you get that inheritance... Now, theirs was natural, but I'm talking spiritual tonight. You're going to have to make a move. My first husband, I remember, oh, at the times we moved. Now, he was a preacher, but before he ever gave his heart to God and become a preacher, he was a coal miner, and he was also a boiler maker. And we traveled all over the United States. I mean, they weren't in a state that we didn't have to leave, live in or, you know, didn't live in. He was in what was called the nat, uh, National, what do you call it? National Union was what it was, of the boiler makers. And we moved continually. But Steve, I learned how to pack. It got to the place where we'd go somewhere because the jobs were so short, I'd save the boxes I unpacked. I knew I was going to have to use them again. He'd come home on a Friday, and he'd say, they just give me orders, got to be across the United States by Monday. I'm telling the truth. This happened over the years many, many times. And what, what we did, we learned how to put everything back in them boxes, and we learned that what we needed to do was put them as close up to the front door that we could get those boxes you hear me? Because they come, we'd go get that old truck and back it in there, that moving truck, and we wanted to be as close to that front door so it wouldn't be that hard to get all them boxes into that moving truck. You understand? I hope tonight that some of you have gotten close to the front door. Do you hear me? You're waiting on the truck, so to speak. You're waiting on the sound of the voice to come on up here or the trumpet to sound. Praise God, you better be ready to move at any moment, at any time. We got to make a move, children of God, and say goodbye, well, goodbye. We're going to an inheritance that had been promised us. And gravity is going to lose its hold. And we're going to take a trip. And you know what? It's got a one-way ticket to it. Yes. Just a one-way. And you know what? It's already bought and paid for. Oh, praise God tonight. 
Amen. And then that third daughter was named Hoglah. H-O-G-L-A-H. I'd call it Hoglaw if it was me. But I believe it's Hoglaw. And it literally means to circle or to dance. And it's also the same word used for a partridge, a bird, a partridge. Now the partridge in the Holy Land is known as a bird of mourning, a bird of crying. It cries louder than any other bird in the Holy Land. And it mourns the most when it loses its mate. Its mate has died. It is a monogamous bird. They're faithful to that mate. And they only have one in their life. Boy, if we don't need to learn something by that. Praise God. But when that mate dies, and that partridge is all alone, about the time that dawn starts coming, that bird starts wailing with its cries of mourning because it's missing its mate. Well, Sister Luke, what's that got to do with the inheritance? Well, he was saying, children, remember when the disease is gone, when you make your move, and by the way, girls, when you get that inheritance, there'll be no more crying over there. All of the tears will be gone forever. There'll be no mourning when somebody dies. There'll be no separation over yonder. We're going to be in a land where we're going to live in his presence forever and evermore and no crying over there in that place. When we step over yonder on heaven's portals, that's the last time we're going to mourn anybody that died. Look how many funerals we've been to and done. I've, I've been all together. I've done two or three of them. I can't remember now. My, five funerals this month. Five funerals, in, or rather in January. I mean, you know, there'll be none of that over there, praise God. But I do believe that God's going to send the angels for us children of God. Y'all know the story. I'm not going deep into it. Reminds me when my son died, Donnie. Bled to death when that portal vein busted in his stomach. And when he got to the hospital, he didn't live long at all. They took a billows. You know what that is? A billows. And literally pumped the blood into him. It's coming out faster and they could put it in. And he was dying. He knew he was dying. He knew it. But I remember him in that bed, and I had my hand on the rail of the bed. And I remember he had been screaming and screaming in the horrible pain he was in. And all of a sudden, it was like the pain just left him. The pain just left him. Now, and I remember holding to that bed rail, and I said something to him. And he said, Mom, shh. Don't talk, Mom. And he grinned, and his ear kind of cocked up, and I thought to myself, he's listening for something. He hears something out there. And he did, Brother Jace. I, I waited, you know how us women are, I waited about 15, 20 seconds, and I said something again, a little bit lower. And again, he said, shh, Mom, don't talk. And again, he grinned, Jason, and, and at the cocking it there. And, and I knew, I knew he was listening for something. That was something. I was holding his hand. I reached out to grab his hand. It wasn't long his eyes went up in his head. It wasn't maybe 10, 15 seconds later. They went up in his eye, in the top of his head, and the whites came up, and he was gone. You know what? I reached down to hold his hand, but there was a hand that was greater than mine that reached out Sister Cookie and took him home to eternity. He loved me. He wasn't disrespecting me in any way, shape, Perform. He knew I loved him, but he loved where he was going to. He caught a glimpse. He heard something going on in the glory world, and I believe that Almighty God was sending the angels.
angels of heaven to come down and take him home. And he heard them coming, children of God. Woo, hallelujah to the Lamb. Let me get through with this. The fourth one, Milchai, M-I-L-C-A-H. And it means a queen from a royal bloodline. Not just any queen, but one from a royal bloodline. I believe tonight that Jesus is king of kings and ever king deserves a queen. And I believe that the Lord was saying, I've got a queen for the heavenly king and it is the bride, it is the church. And I have bought her and paid for her with my own blood. I paid for her at Calvary. I decked her out with jewels. And I've given her a crown. I went down to the regions of the dam and took the keys of death and hell. And I conquered it for my queen. And he's, he's saying, I believe because of that that I've got a bride without spot and without blemish. And church, there's coming a time when the queen, the church of Jesus Christ, will be reunited with the king of kings in glory. We're going to be up yonder, Brother Steve. We're going to rejoice together. You talk about a time when the church goes home. What a day that's going to be. Judy, you can get ready. That fifth one is Tirza, T-I-R-Z-A-H. Her name means favored. Would you stand all over the house? Do you know why we've got an inheritance? He showed us his love. He showed us his favor. Do you know how much favor he showed us? Because he had so much love that he died for you and I. Yeah. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It didn't cost us anything. I've already said it. He paid for it all. All he wants us to do is love him. Do you know Jesus knew who would be listening to this message? I don't know out there who's listening. We've got a lot of people listening by live stream. We hear it all the time. And I don't know who out there might be listening and they don't know the Lord. Or maybe you that are listening have got loved ones who don't know the Lord. And I wonder what it's going to take to get them in. Are we witnessing to them are we telling them about Jesus? Are we telling them how close eternity is? Are you telling them there's a place that's called heaven and it's beautiful and God awaits for them up there? You remember in, in Sister Thelma's funeral yesterday when Diane and I were ministering that funeral and I made the comment. I said, Sister Thelma left those family members the greatest gift she could ever leave them and that was a way to get to her it was because she accepted the blood of Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior I wonder are you telling folks about Jesus get them in you don't have long to work we've got an inheritance that's what I've been talking about these girls said, we want our inheritance. We want everything that belongs to our daddy. Right. And that's what I'm saying tonight. Jesus says you can have it all. He paid for it, but you got to claim it. you got to claim it. Let's pray. Father, I thank you tonight for Calvary. I thank you that there is an inheritance undefiled. Oh, God, that's waiting for us. And God, you, get, you did it for us. You died on that old rugged cross and you're wanting us to be in heaven with you. I pray for every soul that's listening under the sound of my voice that if they don't know you as their Lord and Savior, that Father, they'll reach out and they'll say, forgive me. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Live inside of me. I don't want to die and go to hell. 
Lord, touch the hearts and the lives of family members that might have those that are lost. And, and they've cried and they've wept time and time again over their lost loved ones. Assure their hearts, God, that their prayers are not in vain. That one day soon, they're going to be able to come to heaven if they'll just accept you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for the inheritance. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done for us. We glorify you tonight. We honor you in this house. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead, Judy. Sing with her and then we'll close out. Sing it, church. Sing it. Touch the hearts, God. Touch souls tonight, God. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done for us. We don't deserve it, God. child we got a place to sleep yeah and shoes on our feet gave me love Lord fine family Aren't you glad tonight that he's favored us? We're highly favored. He's given.